Falks. Thank you for the introduction. And uh, I am, nope, I'm Turi. Um, as, as you mentioned, my background is in anthropology, and that means I start from the humans. And everything we're talking about today as we talk about creativity and AI, I want to focus in on how we enable the humans to be really great creatives in this emerging space. So at Frog, um, I have, uh, I am the executive director of Org Activation, and that's when we're working with companies that are trying to understand how do we enable ourselves to be able to react and respond to the market that's ahead of us. So I'm at Frog, and whether we are working with uh, medical technology or we are redesigning the speculum and realizing um, that things can be better, telling stories, or working on conversational UIs with startups, we are very much focusing uh, a lot of our work on understanding the opportunities that new technologies provide and for consumers or for large companies, uh, we are working on services and experiences that begin to transform the world that we see around us. We work with both very large companies and very small companies, but very much focused on how do we transform experiences to make lives better for people. So Frog, this year is actually our 50th birthday. Um, we've been around a long time, and I have been at Frog for about 15 years. And as all of us know from this industry, uh, change is probably the only constant in our industry. And technology increasingly is the driving force behind that change. So whether it is, um, I don't know, how many people remember the day they got their first Gmail account way back when? right? And how uh, our perceptions of Google might have changed from that first Gmail account to realizing how important it is that Google has privacy engineers. Thinking about uh, computer vision and the opportunities that computer vision provides to us as designers to be able to uh, understand the people who are engaging with us and also beginning to recognize the sort of squidgy line that lies between um, what, is, what is great for design and what might be crossing some borders or boundaries like this taxi cab in Japan. And then as we think about other technologies that help us not only see things faster, understand the people we're building relationships with faster, but begin to uh, identify the patterns that underlie our creative work, um, like asking IBM Watson to analyze horror movie trailers, identify the patterns, and then look at the footage for Morgan, uh, I think it was 2016, to identify which scenes should go in the trailer of Morgan to um, really tell the story, make it creepy. The soundtrack's even creepier. Um, so we're able to access these patterns, to see the patterns that underlie our creative work faster. And those patterns come to us even as we think of some of the kind of interesting things that are happening with, uh, like on Instagram. Is anybody familiar with either of these Instagram characters? I see a few nods in the room, right? but computer-generated influencers. So again, we're able to faster identify the patterns of effective influencers and create and play with the environment that's around us. Or the AP or other news outlets that are using intelligence to more quickly generate news reports, to look at the information that's coming in, to generate sports scores, and tell us what's happening in sports to identify what's happening around the world. We are seeing increasingly these patterns being found for us faster, being inputs to our creative process. But what is the human place in that space? So it remains to us as the creative leaders, the people who shape teams, who um, 
are solving problems for the people that we work with, to still be able to take that creative leap. So how do we design teams that don't become bogged down in all of the new data that's available to them, in all of the um, new patterns that are, that are pulled up and brought forth to us? Like Anderton, we with the precogs, we still need to be able to make good decisions. We still need to be able to intuit what feels right. So in this world where we have all this data, all this faster data provided to us, how do we build teams that have the freedom to explore what these new technologies provide at places like you provide? and still maintain the confidence and the ability to make the decisions, to make the call that this is the insight that should drive design. This is the solution that will solve the problem. So that's what I want to talk about. So I'm going to share with you a few strategies from Frog that we've found effective to help our teams be able to continually innovate and stay ahead of what are the possibilities that new technologies provide us. One of them is literally simply about space. Creating spaces where your teams can easily uh, explore new technologies, easily engage, and uh, so we've designed these rolling walls that let our teams quickly reshape the space, whether it is to host uh, music in the studio, but more often it is to be able to prototype a bus or explore new types of technologies uh, in our studios. So provide space, flexible space. Another important thing is invest in passions. Frog is a consultancy, so we need to find clients that we can work with uh, to pay us to do our work. We make an effort to identify those clients that frogs are passionate about working with. Uh, we worked with the SF MoMA for the Magritte exhibit to explore how augmented reality could be part of uh, helping um, individuals access Magritte's work. Frog did this at an incredibly steep discount because it was important to the growth and strength and passion of the team. So if you're in a, play, if you're in a t uh, company where you need to make those decisions, invest in passions. If you have the flexibility to do it, pick your clients. Pick those clients who have a technology that they don't know what to do with. We were working here with a uh, Rambus. They have a lensless um, camera, so a camera that won't identify individuals but has all the power of a camera. What were the possibilities that could be explored there. So we had a very multidisciplinary team of technologists, engineers, designers, thinking about those possibilities and rapidly sketching and prototyping those experiences in code, in the real world, to make them happen. Very cute, right? Um, <laughs> so take the time to do that. Work with startups. The beauty of working with startups is you cannot get stuck in the process. You have to make decisions so quickly to get to the next round of funding, to move the team forward, that that exercise of working to get that new idea out onto Kickstarter forces the team to explore quickly, rapidly, and make the simplest decision needed to get to the next step. You can't focus too much on the technology when you're doing that. Allow yourself to be the Wizard of Oz. 5G isn't exactly here, but uh, the team got to work with thinking about how 5G might influence shopping or um, provide information to teams as they go through a place. So be the Wizard of Oz. Explore the possibility of technologies in human uh, experiences before the technology is really available. 
But most importantly, bring your users constantly into the process and stay close to the humans. Because as creatives, we still need to uh, design those experiences that help um, create emotional connections with our customers. And hire for curiosity. Find folks who are willing to ask why, the people who are willing to challenge assumptions, the people who can identify the implicit bias in a system, and can um, find the insight and the opportunity that will drive design. So as creative leaders, we still have to be able to own the synthesis of the information that's presented to us. So, my last thoughts. Push the client's technology and give your teams the freedom to fail. Invest in explorations that encourage your team to be able to explore. Work with startups so that you don't focus too much on the process over making progress. Encourage passions because you want your teams to feel ownership and curiosity over solving the problem. Go faster, but still be able to synthesize the information. And use that data, but trust in your own intuitive decisions around what's most important. Thanks.